What is going on guys, it is Panjano here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for Rocket League with inside of 2018 slash early 2019. It's been around about a year or so since my last FPS increase guide for this game and a lot of things have changed and a ton of optimizations have come to the game itself and content updates. With this there has been a ton of changes in terms of optimizations to the actual files I released last year, so this video is just going to be an updated guide showing you guys how to get the most out of your systems and get the very best in FPS performance and visuals with inside of Rocket League. But inside of this video there will be configs tailored towards ultra high end systems all the way down to ultra low ancient old potato PCs. So regardless of what sort of hardware you're running on you should be seeing good results across the board. And with this if you guys do enjoy this video and are happy with the results please leave a like on the video as it helps me out tremendously alongside sharing this video around with any friends, family, teammates or anyone that you might find can benefit from the optimizations included in this video. And if you guys can let me know of any results, questions, queries or suggestions for other content or games you wish to see me cover in that comment section down below that would be deeply appreciated as well. And if you guys do enjoy content like this and wish to stay updated with the channel please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever I upload. Right so staying off with inside of the video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be navigating into the description down below and actually downloading the FPS increase pack which has been provided. This pack is just going to be a place where everything inside of this video is going to be compiled into in terms of optimizations, configs and everything you need to follow along. So you can navigate into the description down below, click on the first link, if it doesn't work simply try out the second link and you should be able to download it. Once you guys have got the file downloaded you will need a program called 7zip or WinRAR to actually extract this file because it's a RAD file. So if you don't have one of those programs take yourself over to Google and either Google 7zip or WinRAR and still onto your machine and come back to this video. So that you guys have now gone ahead and done that what we can now go ahead and do is right click on the file downloaded and press extract here once the file is finished extracting you'll then notice on your desktop that you'll have a folder on your desktop with an identical name so starting off with inside of this video what we're going to be doing is we're going to start off by installing our optimized config files for 2019. to do this is actually very simple and the reason we're going to be doing this first off is just to ensure that we have a platform to build on and make sure that the core game itself is optimized so we can build upon those so to do this is actually very simple and easy to do what we're going to be doing is navigating to the bottom left hand side and clicking on our file explorer inside of here we're then going to navigate over to documents found here on the left hand side so we're then going to be looking for the folder titled my games go inside of that folder and then with inside of here you're going to be looking for the rocket league folder double click go inside of the ta game folder found here go inside of config and with inside of here you should be seeing ta input and ta system settings so assuming you guys are now inside of this folder what we're now going to go ahead and do is just simply go ahead and drag this over to the right hand side of our screen we're then going to go ahead back into the fps increase pack provided by double clicking and with inside of the fps increase pack we're going to be going inside of the configs folder and with inside of you'll find three config folders containing configs for different system specs. You have the recommended config which I've recommended for pretty much everyone running on a sort of decent-ish gaming PC. It could be an ultra high-end one but it's the recommended settings in which I'd recommend everyone trying out. If your systems can't manage those settings and you want better FPS you can drop down to the medium end config. And for any of you guys out there who are running on laptops or super low-end machines and you really want to get the best FPS possible you can go with the ultra low-end config. For me I'm going to be going ahead and actually installing the recommended config so click on the folder containing the config you're going to install. Once you're inside of there you'll then be greeted with the TA system settings config in which you're going to install and to install it it's very simple and easy to do you just simply go ahead and drag this over to the right hand side into your documents game folder and it's as simple and as easy to do as that you might be prompted to replace the file in this destination if you are just simply go ahead and hit replace and you've now successfully installed your optimized game config moving on from there what we can then go ahead and do is simply go ahead and actually exit out of both of those folders and we can continue on further building upon our optimizations and actually optimizing the game files themselves what we can now go ahead and do is navigate into steam navigate over to rocket league we can then right click on Rocket League and navigate down to the properties tab. When inside of the properties tab what we're going to start off by doing is actually disabling the in-game steam overlay unless you use this. Many people like myself don't actually use the in-game steam overlay for anything so if you don't find yourself tabbing out and talking to friends or anything like that I'd recommend turning this off if you can. Proceeding on from there what we can now go ahead and do is actually navigate up to the top to the local files section found here. We can then go down to browse local files and this will then bring you to your game installation directory. What we're interested in doing is actually going into the binaries folder going into Win32, we're then going to go down to the Rocket League application found here, we're then going to proceed to right click, navigating down to properties, inside of the properties tab, navigate up to the top to compatibility, we're then going to select the options for disable full screen optimizations, then clicking on change high DPI settings and also checking the box for override high DPI scaling behavior performed by, pressing OK, and pressing apply. Make sure that you have both of those options checked before pressing apply. Once you've got that done, simply again go ahead and press OK, and we can then exit out of the game folder and we've further optimized the game applications themselves. Piggybacking off of that step, what we can now go ahead and do is actually do a modification to the process priority with inside of Rocket League to ensure that the game is booting in high priority mode with inside of Windows to ensure that it's getting the most amount of resources as possible. This saves you having to tab out, open up Task Manager and set the game to high priority mode every time you boot it. It will automatically be detected by Windows and boot into high priority mode every time. So to do this is actually very simple. What we're going to be doing is navigating into the FPS increase pack provided, this time going into the optimizations folder and going into Rocket Process Manager. 
With inside of here, you'll then have three options, which is going to be Rocket League above normal priority, Rocket League high priority, and Rocket League normal priority. But for everyone watching this video, I'd highly recommend going ahead and actually double clicking on RL high priority by double clicking just like so, then pressing yes to this pop up, and it'll then notify you that the changes have been successfully made. Then go ahead and press OK. You've now successfully applied this optimization, and every time you boot your game, it should boot in high priority mode with inside of Windows. Now, once you guys have booted the game, what we can now go ahead and do is actually navigate into the bottom left hand side and click on the options menu. With inside of here, we're then going to navigate over to the video tab, and this is pretty much where we're going to apply the rest of the performance optimizations and fine tune our game for visual quality or performance. With inside of here, what we're going to be doing is going ahead to our resolution, and I'd recommend setting this to your monitor's native resolution. Display mode, we're always going to be setting this to full screen. I'm personally going to be using windowed at the moment because I'm recording and I don't want anything to mess up, and it's just safer to do so. But whenever I go to play this game, and whenever you guys go and play this game as well, you should always be running in full screen. Vertical sync I'd recommend turning off for everyone, as it just introduces input lag and will make your game feel a lot more sluggish. Anti-aliasing is going to be a personal preference. I personally recommend everyone turning this off for the best results possible. Render quality is going to be one of the most important options for furthering FPS on lower end systems. You can go ahead and select high performance. If the game looks too washed out for anyone running on low end systems, try bumping it up to performance. Just go through these options whilst inside of a game, so you can monitor how it looks as you're changing it, and find a balance in which suits you best. Maximum FPS, you can set an FPS cap in here if you wish to do so. I'd personally recommend removing any FPS cap, as it's always best to have the best FPS possible as it lowers input lag and response times. For the rest of these options found here on the right hand side, I'd recommend leaving them alone as they are pretty much completely optimized in terms of the config in which you've installed, but you can come in here and change around some of these as well, but your results will differ depending on how much you change these around. Once you're then done with inside of there, just go ahead and apply those options, press back, and we can then go ahead and exit out of the game. Another quick, easy, and highly effective optimization we can apply to Windows itself to give us better performance across the board for practically every game we play is we can actually navigate down into our Windows power options, and we can actually set a secret power mode with inside of Windows to ensure that we're getting the best FPS possible and the best performance possible for pretty much everything we do. To do this is actually very simple to do. We're going to be navigating into the bottom left hand side and typing in power plan, just like so. It doesn't matter what the option says, just click on one of them. With inside of it, we're then going to navigate up to the directory at the top and click where it says power options. With inside of here, we're then going to navigate down to show additional power plans and you should be seeing balanced, high performance and power saver. For the majority of you guys watching this video, unless you've enabled this yourself already, you should not be seeing the ultimate performance power plan. But to unlock this power plan, it's actually very simple and easy to do and there's going to be a card on the screen now in which you can follow along with and also a link in the description down below. For a small video, it's only a few minutes long and it will show you guys how to actually enable this inside of Windows 10. Everyone watching this video who's running on Windows 10 can enable this power plan and will see fantastic results from doing so. If you guys don't wish to follow that video and you just wish to follow this one, you can also set the high performance power plan, but this won't work as well. So to make a decision now whether or not you're going to be going with the ultimate performance or the high performance power plans. Then what you'll do is you'll simply go ahead and actually highlight the power plan you're going to be going with and we can then exit out of this option. We can then navigate into the bottom left hand side once again, this time typing in this PC just like so, right clicking on this PC and going to properties. With inside of here we're going to be navigating to the top left hand side and clicking on advanced system settings. We're then going to navigate to the advanced tab found here at the top, go to the performance tab and click on settings. With inside of the visual effects tab we're then going to be going down to the drop down menu and selecting the adjust for best performance option. Once you guys are done with inside of that I'd recommend going ahead and pressing apply, pressing ok and ok. Another fantastic optimization in which we can use to improve performance across the board for Windows itself, helping us get better FPS and smoother FPS with inside of every game is actually going into the FPS pack once again, this time going inside of the optimizations folder, and we're going to go ahead and actually double click and install the CPU core parking setup. And at the bottom side of the screen now you should be seeing a brief explanation as to what CPU core unparking will do, and the benefits in which comes from this. It's completely safe to do, and I'd recommend doing this for every single PC, as you should be seeing great results across the board, regardless of your system specs. So inside of the setup launcher go ahead and press next, accept the terms of the license agreement and press next, next and install. Once the program is installed ensure the launch option down here is selected and press finish. After a few moments the program will open up and you might be notified of an updated version being available. You can update to this if you wish to do so, I never tend to bother, but if you want to update you can. For me I'm just going to be going ahead and pressing close. Now with inside of this program we're only going to be changing four options. To start off we're going to be going to the power data plan drop down menu found here, and in this drop down menu what we're going to be doing is we're going to be selecting the same power plan we set with inside of Windows earlier on. So if you went with the high performance power plan, select high performance. If you went with the ultimate performance, select ultimate performance. Once you guys have got that done, we're then going to be navigating down to core parking index, 
dragging the blue slider and dragging this up to 100%, allowing our system to be able to use 100% of our CPU cores. Then I'm going to go over to frequency scaling index and again dragging this up to 100%, allowing our system to use 100% of the speed of all of the cores. And last but not least, for some of you guys watching this video, you might not have this option available, but if you do, make sure you come down to turbo boost index and once again drag this up to 100%. This will not make your CPU run at 100% load all the time, it's completely safe to do and I highly recommend doing this. So once that's all set up and done, we're then going to go down to the apply button. You'll then notify that changes have successfully been applied, press OK, and we can then exit out of the program as that step is completed. Following on from there, what we can now go ahead and do is actually further optimize our GPUs or graphics cards to ensure that we're running on the latest GPU drivers and are running the best settings possible and getting the most out of them to ensure that we have stable frame rates, fluid frame rates. This is very important to do and if you guys haven't actually updated your GPU drivers manually or you can't remember the last time you did it, make sure that you go ahead and actually follow along with this step as these drivers are constantly being updated and improved to ensure that you guys are getting the best performance on pretty much every single game you play. For many of you guys experiencing issues in games like Rocket League and newer games and other AAA titles, you can sometimes find FPS increases of upwards of 10% and this can also hold a host of fixes for any issues you might be experiencing so it's always worthwhile doing. So if you guys are running on Nvidia GeForce GPUs it's very simple and easy to update your drivers. All you need to do is navigate into the description down below, click on the link and you'll be brought to this website. You'll then go ahead to the automatic driver updates utility found here, hit download, download the program, install it to your PC, it will go ahead and detect and install everything for you and get you up and running. For you guys running on AMD Radeon based GPUs it's a very similar process but it takes a few more steps. What you guys need to do is navigate into the description down below, click on the AMD Radeon website link, and with inside of it you'll then come to the graphics tab found here, and you'll then go ahead and actually go through all of these menus found here to navigate and find the GPU in which you are using. So for me my secondary PC has a GTX 500 series in it, as a RX 500 series, and it's running a Radeon RX 570. Once you guys have selected that, you'll then go ahead and press submit. And with inside of here, you'll then click on the corresponding driver for the operating system in which you are using. Once you guys have updated your GPU drivers, it's highly recommended that you actually go ahead and restart your PCs to ensure that everything is running and we can further build upon the optimizations for those. So just go ahead and do that if you've reinstalled your GPU drivers. Proceeding on from there, we're then going to be going ahead and actually applying an NVIDIA optimization. So for any of you guys running on AMD Radeon GPUs or integrated graphics, just simply skip around about a minute into this video to skip this step. But for anyone running on an NVIDIA graphics card, this will help out a ton. What you guys will need to go ahead and do is navigate into the FPS pack provided once again, this time going inside of the optimizations folder, and we're going to go down to the NVIDIA profile inspector application found here. Simply go ahead and double click on the application, and it should open up a screen that looks very similar to this. With inside of here, we're then going to be navigating down to the frame rate limiter mode found under sync and refresh found here. Double click on frame rate limiter mode so you can actually adjust it. Go into the drop down menu, we're then going to select the option for 0x04 PS frame rate limiter 2 control delay flip by flip. Go ahead and select that option just like so, it should look very similar to this. Then go ahead and press apply and we can then exit out as that optimization has now been completed. What that will actually help you do is lower input lag and frame lag with inside of pretty much every single GeForce graphics card in which you can apply that to. Another couple of videos I'd recommend you guys actually checking out will be linked in the description down below and also on the screen now for anyone who wishes to spend a little bit more time further optimizing their PC to ensure that they're getting the most out of it as possible. As I don't want this video to run over excessive time, those links and videos on screen now will contain the guides to the ultimate NVIDIA control panel settings which you can actually access by right clicking on your desktop, alongside the AMD Radeon equivalent of the control panel settings, and also my ultimate guide to GPU overclocking. All of those videos are incredibly easy and safe to follow and I'd highly recommend following them if you can take the time to do so, as you'll be seeing great results across the board, you'll be able to educate yourself on things such as overclocking and optimizations, and you'll really be able to get the most out of the machine in which you've paid for. So now that we are completely done with the optimizations, what we're going to be doing is actually going ahead and performing a system reboot just to ensure that Windows has successfully applied all of the changes. So what we'll do is navigate into the bottom left hand side, right click on the power option, and select the restart option. You'll then restart your machine, come back to this video, log into Steam, and get ready to continue on with the final optimization and get ready to play. For the last and final optimization, which is one of the most important ones, what we're going to be doing is navigating into the FPS increase pack once again, this time navigating into the optimizations folder, and you'll find the timer resolution application found here. What you'll simply then go ahead and do is drag this onto your desktop just like so. And for a brief explanation and demonstration on what this program does and when to use it, what this program basically allows you to do is it lowers the amount of input lag between your operating system, the hardware you have installed, and the game application itself. This overall improves responsiveness, lowers frame times, increases frame rates, and just overall makes the game a lot more snappier and smooth. I personally recommend this program to practically everyone. This alongside CPU unparking are two of the most effective things in which you can do for any PC, especially for people who are looking to play games. So to use this program and when to use this program, what you'll do is you'll simply go ahead and get ready to play your game. Before you boot up your game, what you'll do is you'll boot into time resolution just like so. You'll then select maximum, which will set the lowest input latency possible. You'll then minimize the program 
At this point you'll then boot your game, whether that be Rocket League or anything else. You'll play your game for however long you wish to do so. Once you're then done playing and you've closed out of your game, you'll then navigate down to your taskbar, bring the program back up, select default to set the normal value back, and exit out. And it's just that simple and easy to use. It's 100% safe to use, so don't panic when using this. I'd recommend using this on practically every single game you can, even if it's something like Counter-Strike or PUBG. No matter what it is that you're playing or doing, I'd highly recommend having this program open, as it is incredibly effective. So all there is left to do now is to simply go ahead and boot into time resolution, select maximum, minimize the program, navigate into Steam, go to Rocket League, and hit play. And there you guys have it, my ultimate FPS increase guide for Rocket League with inside of late 2018 slash early 2019. If you guys have got any other tips, tricks or anything else, let me know in that comment section down below, alongside leaving a like on this video if you are happy with the results. Leave any questions, queries or suggestions in that comment section down below as it is always fantastic to hear from you guys. And again, if you are interested in content like this, please do consider pressing that subscription button and the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever I upload. I hope you guys are more than pleased with the results found with inside of this video. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Pangino and I'm out.